It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. Sorrel Garmd, you guys sick of my pick and port videos yet? All right, today on Sorrel Garmd, we're going to be talking about the different types of sequences in body MRI. I'm just going to basically pull up the sequences on a body MRI, and I'm just going to talk about them just like I think about them every single day. All right, there's no pre-planning or anything. I'm going to go ahead and start right now. Here is a set of images. I'm just going to start scrolling through it. This is a body MRI. And I'll show you how I dissect this out. So this is not CT. We're looking at an MRI. There's either going to be T1 weighting or T2 weighting. That's the first thing I'm thinking when I'm looking at this set of images is, is this T1 weighted or is this T2 weighted? How do I figure that out? I look for fluid. All right. Here I'm seeing fluid or bile in the gallbladder. I'm seeing fluid in the intrarenal calyces. And I'm seeing fluid surrounding the spinal cord. These are all bright and signal, so I know right away this is a T2 weighted image. Now once I know it's T2 weighted, I have to figure out is it fat saturated or not? Very simple. Look at the fat. The fat here is not low in signal. It's kind of a intermediate in signal. So this is a regular T2 weighted image and that's that. All right, so now I'm scrolling down and again, I'm trying to figure out is this T1 weighted, T2 weighted? Now my eye is picking up a lot of bright signal here and here's some signal here in the gallbladder. Again, the calyces, again, fluids around the spinal cord. So I know immediately in a millisecond, this is a T2 weighted image. Now, is it fat saturated? Well, yes, I'm looking at the subcutaneous fat here and that fat is low in signal. And so this is a T2 weighted fat saturated image. And the beauty of this set of images is that it'll make any sort of fluid based pathology, which most pathologies are fluid based. It's going to show me that very easily. It's going to basically uh, direct my eye to that because there's all this dark signal and then there's all this bright signal that's the fluid. All right, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison. These are both T2 weighted images. I have fat saturation on the right and I have non-fat saturation on the left. And I hope you can see that it's just a lot easier to see fluid on the set of images on the right. Now suppose I'm looking at this person's liver and I'm looking for hepatocellular carcinoma, which tends to have higher water content than the surrounding liver. It'd be a lot easier for me to pick that up on this fat saturated image because this would get rid of all the uh, fat signal and just direct my eye to that lesion. So I've had a really subtle lesion in the liver, it'd be a lot easier to see on this image on the right with fat saturation. So that's kind of the point of fat saturation. It improves the dynamic range. And I think you can sort of just understand that here visually on this slice right here. All right, so moving on, I have a set of images here. Again, first question is, is it T1 weighted? Is it T2 weighted? All right, I'm looking again at the fluids around the spinal cord. It's uh, low in signal, so I know right away this is a T1 weighted set of images. I can double check that. I can look for the gallbladder. Here's the gallbladder. It's dark. Again, this is T1 weighted. So now I know this is T1 weighted. Now, this is an interesting set of images. You can see that on the images on the left here, there's this low signal or this uh, artifact basically surrounding all these structures. This is a very specific sequence in body MRI called in-phase and out-of-phase imaging. So this is the out-of-phase image here on the left. These are the in-phase images here on the right. And what is the point of this uh, sequence? This sequence uh, basically boils down to a couple things. It's good for picking up basically two uh, processes. Uh, the images on the left, anytime you have fat and water in the same voxel, the same point in 3D space, it will show uh, a loss of signal. And this is due to uh, something I'm not going to get into, but basically the frequency differences between fat protons and water protons. And uh, the image on the right is going to kind of uh, actually uh, be a susceptibility sequence. So anytime you have an area of non-homogeneity, you're going to have a loss of signal on the images on the right. So let me just show the most common reason you get these images. If you want to make a diagnosis of hepatic steatosis, which is fatty infiltration of the liver, you can use this out-of-phase image to see if there is loss of signal in the liver. And actually in this patient's case, if you look at the liver parenchyma here on the image on the left, compared to the image on the right, you can see there's darkening. So what that tells me is that there is fat and water in the same voxel in the liver on the image on the left, and that's telling me this patient has hepatic steatosis or fatty liver. 
All right, so moving on, I have a set of images here in front of me. Again, is it T1 weighted? Is it T2 weighted? That's the first thing I'm asking. I'm looking here at the spinal cord and the fluids around the spinal cord, the CSF, it's dark. I'm looking in the gallbladder, that's dark. This is T1 weighted. Is it fat suppressed or not fat suppressed? Looking here at the subcutaneous fat, it's extremely dark. And so this is a fat suppressed image. This is a T1 weighted uh, non-contrast and fat suppressed image. And what this will show me is anything that is intrinsically bright, uh, intrinsically high in T1 weighted signal. That's a short list of things. There's only four things that are going to be bright on T1 weighted images. There is subacute hemorrhage, also known as methemoglobin. There is a proteinaceous content. There is a gadolinium, which is the contrast agent we use in MRI imaging. And there is a melanin, which is unique to uh, the skin and then also melanin uh, containing tumors. Right. So one thing I'd like to point out is if you look at the pancreas here, as I'm coming up through the unsinate process into the head of the pancreas here, you can see the pancreas is somewhat relatively bright compared to the other structures, and that's due to the proteinaceous content of the enzymes in the pancreas. So this is actually a really good sequence for looking at the pancreas. A lot of other things you can do with this sequence, but just showing you that the pancreas is well evaluated on this set of images. All right, we're moving on. So we did the T1 weighted non-contrast set of images. Now I'm showing you a dynamic uh, post-contrast set of images. Now there's a lot of information here. This is not something you can really just discuss in a few seconds and understand it. But what I want to show you is that this is uh, a set of images, a bunch of images that are taken after we give intravenous gadolinium to the patient. Uh, we then scan multiple times and what we see is that there's going to be a distribution of contrast throughout the body. This image here shows uh, basically contrast in the arterial phase. You can see that I can see the arteries really well. And this would be very good for, say, uh, planning uh, a hepatic arterial intervention. It would show me the arteries of the liver and of the small bowel really well. And I could figure out, okay, is there a uh, congenital abnormality? Is there an anatomic variant that I need to know about in order, in order to do a procedure? As you move through the images, you see gradual... Uh, uh, change of the contrast as the contrast moves through the body. We're going to get portal venous enhancement. So this is going to be a good sequence for looking for any sort of tumor involving the liver. Um, and one of the advantages of this sequence is that we can see, we can characterize lesions based on how they take up contrast. Do they take up contrast early on and then wash out? Because that's an important thing to know. And as we get more and more delayed throughout the sequence, we see homogeneity of structures and we see uh, venous uh, washout of, of contrast. So this is the T1 weighted post-contrast set of images. These are multiphasic, meaning that we take images at time intervals after we give the contrast. So we have non-contrast, this is arterial, this is a late arterial, we're kind of getting into portal venous here, and then we get into more delayed uh, venous phases as we keep going forward. All right, so there you go. We went through all the major sequences in a body MRI. There's going to be T2-weighted images. There's going to be uh, T2-weighted images with fat saturation. There's going to be T1-weighted images with in-phase and out-of-phase, meant to look for intravoxel fat or intravoxel metal. There's going to be a T1-weighted uh, non-contrast fat-saturated image uh, imaging sequence, meant to look for structures that are intrinsically T1 bright. And then lastly, there's going to be a post-contrast T1-weighted set of images that is multiphasic, meaning that it's meant to look at contrast uh, through multiple time points in order to characterize usually focal liver lesions or any other focal lesion in a uh, solid organ. So I hope that was helpful. Sorry for the delay in getting this video out. I just have a lot of things going on. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please uh, comment below, like it, uh, subscribe, uh, tell me what you think. Sorel RMD, take care.